Hey, if you're struggling to play your guitar scales, I'm gonna show you a couple simple techniques that you can use to run your scales up and down fluently with pinpoint accuracy. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of every single time I post a video out on guitar playing. So this is a process that I started using when I started playing my scales for the first time. Um, it wasn't a process that I created myself. I was just really lucky to hang around some really good guitar players um, who helped me run through the process when I was first playing my scales. So the first thing that you want to do when you're starting to learn to play your scales is you want to pretty much use each finger, you want to assign it to its own fret. So each finger has its own fretboard. What this does is it allows you to clearly know exactly which finger is running up and down when you're moving up and down the scales. And it allows you to see it clearly mentally. What that does is it, it stops your fingers from being tripped up when you're going up and down the scales. This then later on as you get really, really good or as you improve, um, what will happen is you'll start consciously overlapping. So you'll move, you know, you'll use your middle finger to stretch over two or three frets and that'll give it like a bit of a different feel, a little bit of a different texture, um, and you'll hear that different sound change. But in the beginning, you want to have that uniform approach um, to playing your scales. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to give each finger its own fret. Okay, so you lay it out flat, you've got your index, middle, ring, pinky. Okay, and because you're assigning each finger to its own fret, that allows you to just walk down and back up perfectly. Okay, at a later stage, you can then jump, you know, for example, with your middle there, or you might use your ring there for a, a stronger bend or there but when you're going up and down keep it even that'll help you play it the second thing that you want to do is you want to keep your fingers round at all times um, keeping your fingers round is going to create an incredible amount of accuracy and strength is going to build in the right places and your dexterity is going to increase um, when running up and down so doing that, you know, you'll be able to do it a lot smoother, um, keeping the fingers that way. The last thing that you want to do, um, and you don't want this to happen, is you don't want to be pushing down and your finger kind of like crippling. Because um, that, you know, you're just going to trip up and you're going to get stuck. So keep them round at all time, keep that pressure at, um, incredibly pinpointed and accurate. Then with the thumb, you want to keep the thumb kind of on the back in the middle of the fretboard. And you're gonna create that nice cup in your hand around the neck. With that, you're gonna be able to just play like smoothly and cleanly. You're not gonna have any buzzes or anything like that. And you're gonna have a couple of this, like, cause you'll notice if the string's touching the fats of your fingers, but that can be adjusted. So, you know, if your hand's slightly bigger, you may lean over the top of the neck a little bit more. Um, or if it's smaller, you might have to drop down a little more. Um, but I'll show you an example. So you want to keep your fingers round at all times um, when walking up and down the scales. Okay, you want that curvature in there. The last thing you want to do is that you don't want to be playing and have it cripple like that. You want to keep it round so that the accuracy is right in there and you're exerting all of the energy directly pinpointed. Because that's gonna help later on massively. See if I was going, I'd be getting tripped up. If you've stumbled on other simple techniques that you use when playing your scales for the first time um, or even later on, I'd love to hear more about those techniques in the comment section below.
Okay, so the third thing that you want to do is you want to run your scales up and down. Now, the reason that you want to go both ways is because when you're running down your scale, you're going to be creating more of like a hammer on feel, you know, hammering on the strings to move through it. When you're running back up, you want to be pulling off in the upward movement, in the upward motion. And that is pretty much going to create strength in a different way. Um, so having these two feels, because what you're doing is you're gaining feeling within the technique. You're gaining feeling in the fingers of what it feels like to run down and what it feels like to run up. Because at some point, you're just going to be able to do this based off um, complete feel. And you won't even be looking at your hands when you're running down and up. You'll just be feeling the hammer-ons and you'll be feeling the pull-offs. So pay attention to that. So now when running down and up, you want to get that, see the hammer on there. Now if you're individually picking it, that's fine, you're not going to have much of a hammer on feel, going down and up. But if going down and you've got, and you want to do it a little quicker, you're going to hammer on. And when coming back up, you're going to pull off. You know, so you get... So this is individually without a hammer on and pull off. And then this is with. Yeah. <laughs> That's the hammer on and pull off. So the question now that you're probably asking yourself is, which scale do I learn? You know, so you've got your majors, you've got minors, you've got minor pentatonics, you've got harmonic minors, you've got modes, you've got the blues scale, you've got a whole bunch. What I suggest is start with the simplest scale, which is your minor pentatonic, okay? So you can look it up on the internet or there's a whole bunch of, um, there's tons, there's tons of like drawings of it. Learn your minor pentatonic scale just in one position. Um, it's the simplest of scales and it has pretty much the least amount of notes. Um, but it is like the root and the, you know, if you're playing rock, if you're going to go into jazz, if you're going to go into what, anything else, start on that. And then later on, as you've got that comfortable and you can see it simply, you'll then be able to add like a couple notes in and create the blues scale. You'll be able to add in more notes and create the major scale and the natural minor scale and the harmonic minor scale. But you can build it all from that scale. And when you look at guys, you know, like, you know, you look at Eddie Van Halen and you look at Slash and you look at Jimmy Page, these guys were pure specialists in like that pentatonic and they made it sound incredible. Um, so even if you just use that one scale, you can become awesome. Um, just in that one pentatonic scale. Okay, so looking at the pentatonic scale, you have... It's pretty much what we've been playing the whole time. I say use that minor pentatonic scale. You know, I'm playing it off A. It's a minor pentatonic scale. And later on, you know, you can add in the flat five to create the blue scale. And then you can create the natural minor scale. Um, and the major scale. You can create the harmonic minor scale later. You know, add in, add in. For now, just keep, keep to the pentatonic. Cool. So if you need more help with some of the techniques and the exercises, download my free videos in the description. Um, they'll be able to help you walk through a couple more of those. Um, or if you want a super in-depth kind of detailed movement into the guitar and what it takes to go from zero to becoming an advanced player um, check out my guitar course in the description i'll put a link to that below as well 
So check out this video next. I'll leave a link in the description um, for you there where you can check it out. So until then, peace.